morning, everybody. Do you really hear? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Gakuin Club. Today we are starting Saku Takizawa, our pretty dark-haired Megane boy here. I just love tall guys. Oh, he's got that wonderful combination of being tall and he wears glasses. I think my next guy of interest will be Renji Kamiki. It is kind of a tough decision between them, but those glasses totally tore it for me. But Kamiki, though, he just reminds me so much of Itsuki from Nord 9 that I really want to play him. Yes, of course, to remind you once again, I cannot read the endings to these games. It is a condition put upon us by Dogenzaka Labs. We are not allowed to put YouTube videos up of the endings of these games. Or we risk getting copyright strikes from the company and losing our channels. That doesn't just go for me, that goes for any channel, though some people don't read the uh, company's conditions. Oh yes, and I did say in the last video that I would... Uh, let you all know the, the, how the ending structure is for this game because you know the happy endings are happy endings but then the normal endings yeah it is like charming empire where the not happy ending is kind of inconclusive and unfulfilling and yeah not a happy ending not like the old dogenzaka games where both endings were good happy endings in some way or another and sometimes the normal ending was better than the happy ending this is not like that no. These games in conjunction between Dogenzaka and Opera House, the normal endings are not happy. At least as far as I've seen. Alright, so anyway, let's get started with Saku here. And you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Chapter 1 The sunlight pours into my room, waking me up. Seeing an unfamiliar ceiling above me, I wonder if I'm still dreaming. Huh? Um, where am I? Oh, that's right. I just moved here yesterday. I sit up and see a large dormitory room. Each room is supposed to have two residents, but I don't have a roommate. Lucky you. I heard it's because the student who was living here just happened to graduate. But is this really okay? Don't question it. Just enjoy it while you can. Nobody's here, but I still feel sheepish. Still, there's no point in feeling guilty about it. I wash my face in my room sink and put on my new uniform that's been hanging on my wall. This uniform is so cute. I like the uniform of my old school too, but I always wanted a blazer. Actually, one of the reasons I've been looking forward to transferring is the uniform. I had gotten excited as soon as I saw it. Huh? Oh no, there's a stain. I hope it comes out. I tilt my head when I see a faint brown stain on the sleeve. Fortunately, rubbing it with my fingertips gets it right out. Ah, oh, lucky. Oh, good. But I don't remember this getting dirty. Oh. I remember where I was yesterday. It had been so dark, I'm sure I must have bumped into something. So then, I guess it means that I didn't just dream last night. What in the world is this school? Well, I knew that it's a famous school, and nothing about it would be normal, but that was just... As I'm thinking, I hear my alarm. I turn and see that it's already five minutes past when I was supposed to leave the dorm. Oh no, I can't be late for my first day of school. That'd be so embarrassing. I grab my bag and rush out of the room. The dorm is fairly quiet, as I guess most students have already left for school. I hope I get there in time. I I made it. This is class 2-1, isn't it? Thanks to Takizawa and Kagurozaka showing me where the classroom was yesterday, I've managed to make it here in time. I was told that I can just come to class on my own, but I'm so nervous. I've always been a little shy, so I can't help but feel nervous in situations like this. Ah, oh, I'm so excited. Maybe I'll wait for my teacher and go in with him. Oh, but... Oh, Akane. I had to stay positive. I'm sure my classmates are nice. Did you not notice? <laughs> Alright, let's do this. Hmm? Did she not hear me? Hey, good morning. Yes, oh. I'm slapped on the shoulder. I frantically turn and see a smiling Minakawa and a grimacing Sakai. Oh man, Sakai is back to being Minakawa's follower. That's so sad. I'm gonna have to see him like this in everybody else's route. Knowing this about him, it's sad. I, I'm sorry. I was doing some thinking. Good morning, Minakawa. Good morning, Sakai. It's fine. You look really nervous. Actually, I'm really surprised you remember my name. Isn't that great, Toma? Not really. That's not a lot to remember. More importantly, you shouldn't be acting so familiar with her already. People will know. People will know what? 
What? It's fine. Besides, it's, it's normal to be nice to a transfer student. You draw enough attention. I think any extra interaction from you will cause her more harm than good. What? Really? Oh, um... It doesn't actually seem like they don't get along. In any case, it's kind of a relief to have people I know in my class already. Minakawa and Sakai continue to talk as I relax my shoulders from relief. While Sakai sounds cold and indifferent, Minakawa doesn't seem affected at all. Um... What? Oh, Takizawa, good morning. I hear a voice to my side and turn my head. Takizawa stands a clear head taller than me, and he's not smiling like he was yesterday. Ah, oh, how are you so tall? Oh, that reminds me. Takizawa said he was in this class too. Good morning, excuse me. What? I can't go inside if you're blocking the way. Would you mind moving? Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. Here you go. Thank you. I frantically move out of his way, and Takizawa enters the classroom. I was in his way. Was he... angry? No, Saku is always basically like that. So you don't need to worry about it. Also, we're peers here. You don't need to be so formal. R really Okay, um... Asahi and Toma? Yeah, great. You don't mind, do you, Toma? Do whatever you want. Well, you heard him. Anyway... It's good to see you again. Oh, that's kind of funny. We're on a first name basis with Toma. Way, way before we were on his own route. He offers out a hand with a smile, and I reach out to grab it without thinking. I take a breath as his hand feels warm like the sun. Yes, it's nice to see you again. Thank goodness there are people I know in my class already. Asahi is so nice, too. I'm really lucky. While I'm still worried, I feel like I'll be able to manage somehow. The feeling lasts only a few minutes. Or am I going to get bullied as soon as I walk into the classroom? As soon as I enter the classroom, I realize how wrong I am. Are... are they all looking at me? I notice all the other students run toward me as I enter. Is it because I'm a new transfer student? At first, that's what I think. But then I follow their gaze and see that they're actually looking at the other two boys. It looks like they're looking at Asahi and Toma, not me. Okay, I'm... I'm not quite sure how to restructure this sentence because the sentence is wrong, but what's more, I can see they're distracted by looks of admiration and adoration. It seems they're popular with boys and girls. Looks like your seat is next to mine, Akane. Oh, okay. He invites me with a smile, but my body shrinks almost automatically. I mean, it's... I'm getting such scary looks. Everyone's surprised looks get pointed at me. All I can do is plead ignorance. And no acting formal. If you ever need help with anything, just ask. We're neighbors, after all. Oh, uh, okay, thank you. Well, I'm having some issues now, but I can't tell him that because I'm sure he doesn't mean any harm. I tried to tell you. You are so clueless about some things, Asai. I hear Toma muttered. Now I can fully appreciate what he means. It's not long before the teacher enters and introduces me during homeroom. Fortunately, the class welcomes me with warm applause. But of course, Asahi is the one who claps the loudest, which causes me to shrink as I stand in front of the blackboard. As I'm bombarded by the stares of my classmates, I see Takizawa in the corner, looking off to the side. Is he shy? He's resting his chin on his hand, looking out the window. I find myself staring at him when he suddenly turns toward me. Oh! I automatically cast my eyes down. At that same moment, the teacher tells me to return to my seat. Oh, should I have not done that? What if I made him angry again? Asahi said not to worry about it, but I have a hard time reading Takizawa's expression. Huh. What's the matter? Are you okay? Oh yes, thank you. Asahi asks me out of concern, and I smile. He smiles back. The more I talk with him, the more stares I would get. Uh, I think I'm going to get a stomach ache from the very first day. Homeroom ends and classes begin. I let out a small sigh, making sure Asahi doesn't notice. Class ends and it's break time. Asahi starts talking with me, and it seems everyone around falls silent to be polite. But during third period, the student assistant returns from the teacher's lounge with a bit of news that stirs up the entire class. Next period is free study. 
I can show you around the campus if you want, Akane. What? But don't we need to stay in the classroom? Oh, it's fine. We're allowed to study somewhere else for free study here. Some people even hold club practice. It's not a problem as long as we're back in the classroom before next period. Oh, um... Asai, don't you need to have a meeting about that issue you were talking about yesterday? Thank you, Toma. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Ugh. I guess it can't be helped. I'm sorry. We'll have to do it some other time. That's okay. Thanks. Asahi seems disappointed as I watch him leave with Toma, and I let out a sigh of relief. I'm really thankful for how considerate he's being, but... Hmm. He's a really nice person, so I'm sure he's just meaning to be kind to the new student, but... Hey, Koizumi! Do you know Minakawa and the others? As soon as Asahi and Toma leave, I get surrounded by my classmates. I'm sure they're all very curious. Um, well... They helped me yesterday since I was wandering around lost in the school, so that's how... I'm not lying, that's all true. I just happened to see something even more startling afterwards. Fortunately, they all seemed satisfied with my answer, and their stares earlier appear to just have been from simple curiosity. I see! Minakawa is so nice after all. But I'm so jealous! I wish he talked to me like that too! My surrounding classmates seem spellbound, as they stare with glistening eyes. Judging from the looks and laughs the girls give each other, I have to wonder if they're all fans of his. Asahi seems to be quite popular. You have no idea. He's so kind and handsome, and he's also the son of the headmaster. He's popular with all grades, although it seems like he doesn't have a special someone yet. He's athletic and gets good grades. He's like a prince, but I think I'm more Team Toma. Team Toma? You mean, that Toma? Yes, he's very unsociable, but that's what I like. I like how cold he is. Oh, then, I'm Team Takizawa. He's so quiet and mysterious. Isn't that just dreamy? Yeah, that's who I'm going for. I'm Team Takizawa. But I really love Toma, too. Uh, they keep mentioning names I'm familiar with. Could those students who were at that place yesterday be famous at the school or something? But what if I told these excited girls about what I had seen yesterday? Then you'd be in trouble. Of course I wouldn't, and I couldn't. If they found out, I'm sure I would be in big trouble. Hey, so what did you talk about with Minakawa yesterday? You two seem so friendly. I'd love to know too. Oh, um, wh what are we going to do? I have to watch what I say here after the warning I got yesterday. Um, uh, okay. Oh, oh, I just remembered that the teacher wanted to see me, so I'll have to talk to you all later. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. That's too bad. Well, see you later, then. Let's talk again. Thank you. I bow to everyone as I quickly make my way out of the classroom. I see some of my classmates out in the bright hallway. Come on, Takizawa, offer me a tour. I manage to get away, but it's probably best I avoid the classroom for now. Maybe I'll go take a look around the school. I don't want to get lost again, nor do I want to interrupt any of their classes, so I make my way down the hall quietly. Wow, I can't believe there's a map of the school like this here. It must be big. As I'm walking down the hall, I see a map of the school on the wall. Looking at it, I can tell just how big this campus is. Let's see. So, if this is here, there's a school store that way, and the library over there. Maybe I'll check it out. I have to make sure I don't get lost because I need to make it back in time for the next period. I trace the map with my finger and check the layout. Then I see the old school building listed on the corner of the map. I'll have to go there tonight too, won't I? I wonder what that place really was. There's so much I can't figure out. It was some place in the school, but it was like another world. Everyone was wearing a mask to cover their faces. What was it? Since they told me not to tell anyone, it must mean it's a secret from other students. But Asahi and the others were there. Hmm. Oh, oops. This side should be a dead end. Let's see. I'll take a right here? Even while I think, I'm being careful not to get lost, or so I had thought. I guess I wasn't careful enough. I am supposed to be cataloging the scenery every time I make a turn, but it seems like I've been too distracted by my thoughts. Oh, dear. 
I soon find myself somewhere completely different from where I wanted to go. My bad sense of direction has done it again. It, it's okay. There's still time before next period. I just need to get back to the building before then, but which way is it? If it were during break time, I'm sure there would be people around, but since this is during class, there isn't anyone. I could have asked someone for directions if there were anybody here, but... Huh? I wonder what that big building is. You remember what happened last time you investigated the building? I see a glistening roof above the tree line. It doesn't look like the school building, but there could be people there. It has to be better than staying here. Okay, I'll check it out. I say loudly as if to encourage myself before I nod and head forward. Why do the heroines in these things always talk out loud? As I walk, my hair swaying in the warm spring breeze, I eventually make it to the building. I find it to be quite large. Am I allowed to go in here? Oh, but I see other students inside. It should be okay. Ah, the library? I can't keep in my astonishment when I see the staggering number of books. L look at all these books! There are books lining the walls and shelves. It seems I had taken the long way around, but I made it to my original destination. I could spend the whole day here without getting bored. Oh, this is the series I wanted to read. They have all of them. Oh, oops. I have to stay quiet. I'd like to read them now, but if I start, I probably won't be able to stop. I'll do it later. Let me just take a quick look around the place. Huh? Isn't that... I see a familiar figure in a pretty unpopular section full of dictionaries and academic books. It's Takizawa. About time you showed up in your route, man. He's holding a number of heavy-looking books. I should probably apologize to him for this morning. Takizawa reaches up onto the top shelf and tries to grab a thick hard-covered book with his fingertips. But he's having trouble, probably because the books he's holding are getting in his way. Oh, um... Takizawa, do you want me to take a few of those for you? Koizumi, are you sure? They're very heavy. That's okay. I'm just worried you might hurt yourself. Well, maybe just a few then. Could you take the top two books for me? Okay. Takizawa and I walk over to a table where I set the books down. I wonder if he's in the middle of writing some report. There's a laptop computer on the desk. The simple default desktop background seems very like him. Takizawa brings over several more books and places them on top of the books I've set down. Classical literature, art books, history books. I don't quite see the connection between the different types of books. Is he a writer? I wonder how he's picking these books. Research material? Thank you, that was really helpful. Oh, you're so pretty. I'm glad I could help. Oh, and I'm sorry for this morning. This morning? I was blocking the doorway. I thought that I may have upset you. Ah. Oh. He let out a sigh after a short response. His expression remained unchanged, but I deduced from the sigh that he must have been mad. This is so awkward. This is just normal. What? Um, normal? I hear this a lot, but I'm not angry or upset. My lack of expression and talking is just how I was born. Oh, uh, I see. So you don't need to be scared of me. Oh, oh, I, I wasn't scared or anything. Um, I stammer since his suspicions are true. I try to come up with an excuse, but I fail and simply hang my head. I love people like that. It's so cute, actually. People who are just, you know, their expressions are really hard to read. <laughs> kind of like Saito and Hakuoki. I'm sorry, Takizawa. There's nothing to apologize for. Oh, and you do not have to be so formal. You can address me how you do with Minakawa. We're classmates after all. But you speak formally. This is like a habit at this point. Please don't pay it any mind. If you could just not address me by my last name. Oh, why? I don't like to be addressed by my parents' name. Huh? Um, so what should I call you then? Saku, obviously. You can call me by my first name. Oh, so... Is Saku what you would prefer? Yes. Also, please don't be so formal. Oh, I apologize. I mean, sorry. So, I'll call you Saku from now on. Yes. 
His tone lacks expression, but it's not like he's mad or anything. Probably. <laughs> I guess I should speak a little bit more monotone for him then. There's a break in our conversation, and I uncomfortably look around the area. The space is bigger than I thought it would be, and this chapter is longer than I thought it would be. Um, what can we talk about? Oh, um, this library sure is amazing. I've never been to a library with such an impressive selection. The Academy receives many donations. The library isn't the only first-rate facility that can be found here. I see. I suppose it's not a famous school for nothing. I got overwhelmed as soon as I arrived. Also, I was really happy to see that they have all the books in the series I wanted to read. I'll need to borrow the next time. Do you like books? It's the first time I hear a hint of emotion in Saku's quiet voice. His expression seems unchanged, but his eyes have a little glimmer. Yeah, I love books. I read whenever I have time. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to bring my books from home here. But with such a selection here, I'll never get bored. I'm looking forward to reading them. I could spend whole weekends here. I see. That makes two of us. Ah, and he's smiling. Oh, I think he seems a little happy. There's no such thing as a bookworm who's a bad person. I'm happy to find something that I have in common with him, too. Having actually talked with him, I find that Sako is very friendly. While he may not say much or show much emotion, he puts me at ease. Saku doesn't start any conversation, but he'll respond to any question I have with short answers. I ask him how to borrow books here, the way back from the library to the school, and about the school itself. But when I steer the conversation to the events of last night, Saku's expression suddenly becomes clouded. I would not get involved with that if I were you. I kinda don't have a choice. So, that place is a secret from everyone else? Yes. Well, perhaps a handful of students have heard rumors of it. I see. I suppose nobody would ever think a place like that existed on campus. To be honest, I would not recommend you going back there, but I don't think you have a choice. Exactly. N no I was told to come today as well. There's also what they told me yesterday. I don't want to cause any worry for my parents. I smile uncomfortably, and Saku lets out a small sigh. There's no stopping Minakawa after he said that. He's the king of the school. King? You haven't noticed? <laughs> He's the headmaster's son, not to mention that personality of his. Once he's decided on something, it just seems to happen. I see. I suppose if he ever came at me with that cheerful and assertive demeanor, I might just nod to anything. But I'm sure... <laughs> oh my god, the facial expression. <laughs> It just is so... does not look like him. That is hilarious. But I'm sure people like him will be able to live better lives. Huh? He always spits the words out. Hmm. Do you resent your shy nature? He's almost saying it more to himself than me. As I'm about to ask him what he means, I'm interrupted by Saku. Class, it seems like it will be ending soon. What? Oh, you're right. We need to get back to our classroom or we're going to be late for our next class. The walk to the school building from here can be done within the break time. Thanks. Oh, what about you, Saku? You're not coming? I am going to stay here a little longer. Okay. Saku returns to working on his laptop. I don't want to bother him anymore as he's concentrating on his work, so I leave quietly to avoid interrupting him. I should get back to the classroom. I follow the direction Saku gave me, and I managed to make it to the school building without getting lost this time. Quite the achievement. Saku, he never came back. I guess he's not a normal student. I glance back during class. Saku is not at his desk in the corner of the classroom. He doesn't return this period. Koizumi, do you want to eat lunch with us? As the class ends, one of my classmates invites me to eat lunch. I see everyone carrying their lunches. I link my desk to theirs, and we set out our lunches. Still not knowing how things work, my lunch today is bread I bought yesterday. The very first topic of conversation is the continuation of our earlier one. 
I ask about Asahi, and I try to play it off. There's really nothing more to tell. He just helped me when I was lost. We didn't talk much. Oh, really? That's a shame that you missed your chance to talk to me in a cow more. Y yeah Oh, that's right. Um, what is Sa Takizawa like? I just ran into him at the library. Oh, that was close. I almost called him Saku. It's probably best to avoid their questions. When I mention Saku's name, the girl next to me gets a glimmer in her eyes. Then she lets out a sigh and proceeds to tell me all sorts of things about Saku, sounding quite enamored with him. Are we going to have a jealous contender here? According to her, he's quiet and is either always in the library or the classroom reading. The hard-to-approach attitude and ennui is what makes him so popular with some girls. I just love how mysterious he is. I think I pronounced that right, isn't that ennui? I, I see. Ennui, you say? I, I don't really get it. But he's also famous because of his parents. Parents? That's right. He told me he didn't want to be called by his last name because of his parents. I wonder what that was about. But when I hear his parents' names, I'm able to understand. I can see why he'd be famous for being the child of such people. Mitsuo Takizawa is a world-famous movie director, and all of his movies become a huge blockbuster hit. And Kahoru Sonado is also a world-famous actress, who also stars in many of Mitsuo Takizawa's movies. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit hoarse. If I remember correctly, Kahoru Sonata got her big break from director Takizawa's movie and won the Best Actress Award that year. I've seen the movie myself, and to sum it up in one word, it's brilliant. The subtle story, the beautiful imagery, and powerful acting. Now that I've been told, I do see the resemblance between Saku and Kahoru Sonoda. There's a lot of children celebrities that go here, but having two world-famous parents will make you stand out. He's not one to really talk, so nobody asks him about his parents, but it's hard to just ignore. I find myself surprised when she goes on to nonchalantly say that her father is only the CEO of a small company. Isn't having a CEO as a father pretty amazing? But I see, Saku's famous. He doesn't seem like the type that likes attention, so I'm sure he's not too thrilled about it. I nibble on my bread as I listen to them talk. I turn and see Saku is still not at his desk. After dinner, I wait until it becomes dark before I leave the dorm and head to the old school building. To be honest, I'm not happy about this, but I don't have a choice. I timidly make my way inside, and I quickly assign work in the back room. It turns out it's all just really simple chores. Well, it's not like I'd want to be in charge of something complicated. I collect trash and restock supplies while I occasionally check on how things are going in the front. As I thought, students from my school are all waiting on masked guests in the extravagant space. I find my heart pounding at the completely different atmosphere from the daytime. Just then I see Saku at a table in the back. He's looking like his usual calm self, surrounded by many guests. Wow, Saku is even popular here. The guests at the other table seem to be laughing and having fun while Saku's table seems rather quiet. It seems the guest is doing the talking, and Saku occasionally nods or speaks briefly. But the guest's face gradually brightens. Eventually, the guest stands up, seemingly satisfied. They turn and wave a few times to Saku before leaving. After Saku sees the guest off, he turns toward me. His expression doesn't change, but he seems a little tired to me. Saku comes in my direction. He enters the back room and speaks rather quietly. Something to drink. What? Could I get something to drink? I'm a little thirsty. Oh, okay. You can have this. There happens to be some cold tea here that I pour into a cup and offer. Saku drinks it down and thanks me when he returns the cup. Thank you. You're welcome. Were you helping that person with something? It happens a lot. Most people who request me have some issue they want to talk about. Which is nice since I don't talk much. You might just be an easy person to talk to. In any case, you must be very nice to listen to them so patiently. Patiently? Oh, it's not exactly like that. But that guest seemed to be really thankful. Most of the time, the people who want to talk already have some sort of answer. What they're looking for is someone to listen 
and tell them that they've made the right decision. Empathetic, yes. If someone pushes them to do it, even if it fails, they'll have someone to blame it on then. That that may be true, but that doesn't sound very fair to me. But I can't tell them it's wrong. Hmm. Oh. Besides, listening to people is quite interesting. Well, good. I'm glad you like it then. Looking so beautiful like that. Maybe he gets ideas to write stories from that. You must like to listen. Yes, particularly the stories women tell are a treasure trove of material. Oh yeah, he's a writer, all right. Material. It's really fun listening to all their self-involved stories. Uh, I find myself at a loss for words when a new guest arrives and Saku returns to the front. It seems like it's not exactly the way I pictured things. Are these consultants with the guests nothing more than research to him? I stare at Saku from the side as another guest seems to have come for Saku's advice once again. Hmm. That was a really crazy long chapter. I wonder if the rest of his is going to be like that, because Tomas was super short. I guess the routes are totally unbalanced, or maybe different chapters are way different lengths. I don't know. Let's see in the next video just how long his second chapter is. I like him so far, though. He is a little bit mysterious, and I think we've already got the idea that he's probably going to be a writer. But I'm pretty sure he has issues with the fact that his parents are famous, too, so... It's shaping up to be interesting. I hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.